Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be covering, is it worth it to buy a Canon 5D Mark IV in 2023? They were a great camera when they came out and arguably they're still an amazing camera today, but should you buy one given all the other camera options that are available? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be covering today. So without further ado, let's dive into the video and get started. So I might have a little bias when it comes to the Canon 5D Mark IV. I traveled the world with this camera and this was the camera that arguably kickstarted my entire photography career. I love it and it was the first serious full frame camera that I no it was the first full frame camera that I ever had and I ever used and I absolutely loved it to bits. I beat it up like crazy and the only way that I was able to get this footage was because it stays at my dad's house in Sydney and uh, yeah, I don't use it, no one uses it, I'm never selling it. The emotional attachment I have to that camera is absolutely crazy. I love it. So to be honest with you, I'm gonna try my absolute best to not come across bias whatsoever, but I do love this camera. Okay, so let's first of all talk about the photo capabilities of this camera because arguably that's exactly what it was built to do. Take amazing photos and I can guarantee you that it does exactly that. The photos that come out of this camera are absolutely gorgeous and they're all coming off the 30 megapixel sensor from the 5D Mark IV. Of course, when you buy Canon, you get the gorgeous Canon colors and the amazing Canon autofocus and this is perfect because the Canon 5D absolutely nails this like crazy. Low light performance is, I guess, a little bit behind if you uh, compare it to today's cameras, but if you take into consideration that this was made in 2018, then I guess it becomes reasonable. A little bit of noise correction on Lightroom and I promise you that you're good to go. Now, given this camera is full frame, that means that you are getting amazing looking bokeh, especially when you're using fast prime lenses. And this is exactly why I think the Canon 5D is still a beautiful camera for photos in 2023. See, the beautiful thing about the 5D is that it has an EF mount. This is not the new fancy RF mount and the EF lenses are much, much cheaper than the RF lenses are. So you can buy way better lenses for way lower cost than you would be able to if you were buying like a Canon R5 or an R6 or an R3. So for example, you can pick up like a 50mm 1.8, a 35mm 1.8 and the 85mm 1.8 all for the same price that you'd probably be able to pick up the 85 millimeter 1.8. Actually, it's not even 1.8, it's F2 on the RF mount because you can buy so many used lenses for this camera, it's not even funny. So if you are looking to get into just photography and photography only, I think this camera is an absolute no brainer. It is built like an absolute tank. I've had this camera out in rain. I've had this camera out in snow, in extreme heat, in the sun, you name it it's been through it. It's been in the water, it's been in the ocean, whatever the case, this camera has been through the absolute works with me and it's still, it's just still, it's still working. You know, they just built like an absolute brick. And that's what I absolutely love about this camera. So to be honest with you, if you're getting into photos, I still think that this is a fairly competitive camera. So let's move on to the video side of things. Now, to be honest with you, I tried to shoot a lot of video with this camera and let's just say, for a certain reason, it didn't really work out. Now this was really a photo first camera and arguably Canon made that very evident. So I guess to be able to hold the 5D up to today's standard just doesn't really work out. Now you can shoot 1080p and 60 FPS at 8-bit. It's fairly average, but this is the best you're gonna be able to get. And you can also shoot 4K at 30 FPS, but it's motion JPEG, which means the files are giant and your computer is just gonna choke like crazy when you're trying to edit them and it has a 1.6 times crop, which means you're gonna be shooting APS-C sized, which means all of your lenses get punched in like crazy. So if you had a 10 millimeter, that's now a 16 millimeter because you need to times the focal length by 1.6. Now the 4K looks yeah, so-so, it's not too bad, it's not too great, but I never shot 4K on this camera, at least not consistently, just because the file sizes were massive and my 2018 MacBook back then just did not want a bar of it. It's also got no in-body image stabilization because it has that big, huge mirror in front of the full frame sensor, which is arguably more than fine in 2018. Hardly any cameras had in-body image stabilization. It does have really good autofocus face tracking, no eye tracking, but the face tracking on this camera works flawlessly. And that's pretty much it when it comes to video specs. This camera, when it was getting released, was really hyped up to be something crazy in the video world, and it just fell really short. It never really rose to what it could have been or what it should have been, and that's why it really drops the ball, especially in 2023, especially given what you can buy for a very, very similar price, which is something we're gonna to touch on in just a minute. 
the video features are just not up to scratch. So if you're shooting video seriously in 2023, although the colors and the autofocus are great on the, not the R5, the 5D4, it's just not worth it. So with all the video features out of the way, you now know what the Canon 5D4 can and can't do. Where does this stack up? Well, with other cameras like the EOS R, with the R5, the R6, the R6 Mark II, the Canon 5D kind of gets lost in this whole thing. So you can buy a Canon RP or an EOS R for much cheaper than a 5D4. And you can also buy a Canon R6 for a very, very similar price, maybe a couple of hundred dollars more. But believe me, the Canon R6, which is what I've been shooting on for the past year and a half, is leaps and bounds ahead of the Canon 5D4, especially when it comes to video. And with that being said, I really struggle to find a place where the 5D4 fits into this whole camera lineup. I really don't think it has a place in 2023 unless you're looking for a very well-built durable body. You wanna be able to use the EF lens mount to save a whole lot of money and you are purely only focusing on photos. If you're a photographer at heart and have no interest in video at all, this could be the camera for you. All right, guys, well, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it and learned something, let me know what it was down in the comments below. If you've got a 5D4 or if you've ever used a 5D4, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. You know, I loved this camera and I used it for about four years straight. This camera did so much for me and I loved it. The lenses were great, the colors were great, the autofocus was great, everything was just on point and it never let me down. And if you're new around here, guys, drop a subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.